Okay, so you've done your research. You got your rock, you got your sand, the tank's got water in it, and it's all cycled. So now you're itching to get some fish in your tank. Well, here's some handy tips on how to go through that process and what's involved with stocking your new reef tank. So now, when it comes to putting fish in the tank, there are three topics that I feel are the areas where you would be buying your fish from. The first one is a tank raised fish from a private owner. Two would be an LFS or local fish store. And the third one would be an online sale. Now, to break that down even further, if you've been lucky enough that the reason you're getting into the hobby is a friend or a relative has a tank and it's amazing and you want to re you know, duplicate it into your house, then you already have a source of information right there. Now, if you, if you are lucky to have this situation, you can talk to this person and say, okay, I'm ready to make my first purchase. What should I do? Probably the first thing that they're going to say to you is make out basically a list of fish that you want to put in your tank. Once that's done and you have this bucket list of fish, they're going to take a look at it and tell you, realistically, the fish that you have, whether they'll work in your tank as far as your tank may be too small for this fish or not suitable um, as far as if it's a reef tank and it's a non-reef safe fish. So now once the list is narrowed down, you now have a basically a shopping list of fish that you can put in your tank and it will work with the size and, and structure of your tank. For people that don't have this and have done it on their own and put all the work in by themselves, there is still help that you can seek out. Whether it be your local reef club joining it or even reaching out to someone in the club to get information from. And also, as you're looking at this video, YouTube is a great area to look for. You can reach out to the people that make the videos and have these channels and have these great tanks and ask them questions about it and they'll be more than happy to answer questions. The best part about YouTube is that you automatically get exposure to the tank that they have and you get to know the person. Even on some of the live streams like, like Rico has on Rico's Reef Tank, you get to know the people and, and know what they're about and it seems almost like a friend then that you can reach out to and ask questions to. So now that you have um, this information that you can work with, the first area that you want to look for is a fish that's tank raised. Meaning it may be from a private collection. It may be somebody that you know that's looking to just get out of the hobby at this point and they have these fish that are up for sale. Or even somebody who's just looking to thin out their tank in preparation for to upgrade their own system uh, and get a little extra money to help that build out. A, a tank raised fish is probably one of the best ones to go with because this fish has spent the majority of its life in an aquarium. It's used to the stresses that come with living in an aquarium and it's built up an immune system um, that will be making a much stronger fish than a fish that comes in fresh from the ocean or fresh from a fish store and acclimated and thrown into your tank. It's going to be able to fight off a lot of the diseases or parasites that will come along with that stress. The second area would be a fish store fish or an LFS, as we call it, local fish store. You go to and they have all these wonderful fish in the tanks and, you know, that's where you're going to make your purchase from. I would recommend that if this is your first time looking for or shopping for a fish, that you get a buddy, get someone that, you know, that is in the hobby to go along with you because <laughs> this is not just an in and out operation. You're going to be spending time there. Get a cup of coffee, hit the store as it first opens because you're going to be looking at fish and there's a lot that goes into it. First of all, the first thing that you do once you walk into a, a, an LFS is you get to know if you can, either the owner or the manager of the store so that this way you there's a conversation you can have with the person to 
give you information on how their system's set up, which tanks are on what filtration, are they all on the same filtra filtration, or are they all, all the tanks on separate filtration. Now, this information is important because if you do see, or if your friend who you bring with you sees a fish that has ick or, or um, any form of disease on it, and there's another fish in another tank that really looks appealing to you, you can, if you know that the tank is on a separate filtration system, then you know that that tank is not infected with, with the same parasite or disease. So having that veteran with you will help you get through a lot of the pitfalls. Because when you walk into a fish store, everybody's first impression is that everybody that works for a fish store knows what they're talking about. And that's just not the case. Um, there is a lot of good people that work for fish stores and a lot of people that are knowledgeable. But there are a lot of people on the other end that this is a job and they're just passing along information that they heard others tell. So looking at the fish... Making sure it's healthy is the first part. The second part is you want to see that fish eat. You want to ask the person who's taking care of that section to feed the fish. So this way you can see if the fish is eating or not eating. If a fish isn't eating, I don't care how healthy it is. You got to put it on, on pause for a little bit and watch that fish and see if it will eat. Because after many attempts, if that fish doesn't eat, it's not going to do you any good to bring it home. It's also not going to be any good to, for you to bring home a, a fish that may not be showing signs of a disease, but the disease is internal to the fish and you get it home and it will either, you know, it die in your tank or infect other fish that you may have purchased already. So now the last part would be an online uh, purchase. This is one that I don't even do. To me, I much rather see the fish in person to see what's going on with the fish than just blindly purchase the fish now there are some cases where people do it and there are some cases where uh, you know it's your only choice in this circumstance you want to go for reviews see what online seller has the best reviews and ask questions to the community that's available to you whether it be your friend or your um brief uh, club or YouTube find out who's got the be who's the best online seller so this way you can make an educated decision on where you want to make your purchase now the whole reason I, I put this video out was because in the beginning when you're first starting out the hobby there's a wealth of information of what fish to get what fish not to get what fish are considered beginner friendly and not beginner friendly this information you need to look up Beginner friendly fish are fish that are basically um, really good for you to purchase first because you may not have the information to deal with a fish that's a little harder to raise. Uh, picking a clownfish as your first purchase is a good idea opposed to getting, say, a powder blue or an Achilles tank. These fish are even tough for the experienced reefer to keep alive in their own tanks, much less a person who's just starting out. So the most important tip I can give you is educate yourself or find someone who you can trust that will give you information to make this first purchase a happy one. Make the whole experience for you one that's easy and enjoyable rather than stressful and one that you will dread doing in the future. In this hobby, knowledge is everything. Educating yourself on what to look for as far as coral and fish is half the battle. Not only the other, what comes later, which is what your tank's telling you and what testing is telling you. So before I get off topic, the most important thing when it comes to buying fish is learning the, what signs to look for. And the only way you can do that is either by asking questions of, of people that you trust, like I said, or getting in touch with the right person that will help you out as much as they can. Another enjoyable part of this hobby is after you educate yourself or gain the education to learn the pitfalls and the signs to deal with the situation such as we're talking about now, 
that you can recall this information when it counts so you know that when you go into a fish store or you go into a situation where you're going to buy a fish you can pick the fish that you like the best that's the healthiest fish you could find so you know already that when you bring that home that fish home and you acclimate it to your tank that fish is going to live there are there are times that even the most veteran of reef keepers will find a fish that they think is healthy only to find out that later on the fish did have something wrong with it and it passes away. It just happens. It's a part of the hobby. So I hope this helped uh, you a little bit to steer you in the direction that you need to be in so you can make that first purchase a happy one for you. And always remember that if you go to my channel and you click the about tab, You'll find my email address where you can always drop me a line and ask me a question uh, regarding um, anything related to the hobby. I don't know everything. I don't profess to know everything. I've been in the hobby five years, so there's a lot of people that know more than I do. Uh, but if I don't know the answer to your question, I can at least steer you in the right direction to find information on it or talk to somebody regarding it. Um, if you are wondering, by the way, the video that you're watching, it is an older video, so there's a lot of coral in this tank that I don't have anymore. So that's that'll show you that even though I have five years in the hobby, there's a lot that I still need to learn. So I guess that's it for now. If you are new to the channel, uh, just remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. So this way you'll get notifications when I put out new videos. And as always, this is Scott. And I'll see you next time around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.